Hello, I'm Jeb and D and D. A and T and I, I have with me Mary Chris, one of my steady players in a lot of my one shots and campaigns. And I'm honored to have her as a, a good friend also. Tonight, we're uh, uh, doing the first video of a weekly series on disabilities and how they affect us as players and DMs and how you can use them um, um, as part of your character. So tonight, since and so I'm autistic and have a speech impediment. That's what we'll be covering because I can talk from personal experience, not just research. But before we do, um, Mary, why don't you give a plug for your uh, Twitch channel? Okay. Um, so uh, for those who are interested in watching, uh, we play D and D or do some drawing. That I do utilize Twitch for those things, and you can find it at Twitch t Twitch TV slash Malfia, which is M A L F E I Y A. Awesome. Yeah. So, oh, the speech impediments is pretty obvious, uh, and it affects me gaming sometimes. Usually, usually it's some people can't understand me or we have to utilize Skype versus Google Hangouts because Skype has a better audio quality for us. Yes. And some people just can't understand my, my speech impediment at all. And, of course, I feel bad for those people that they can't join in the awesome sessions we do, but if they can't understand me as a DM or a player, then <laughs> there's really <laughs> nothing you can do about it. So, some of the ways my odd autism works, works and it's really strange because a lot of society views autism um, um, and the people who have it as being slow or retarded and almost always that's not the case. Normally those those people are very intelligent, very creative the thing is, it's usually limited to one or two areas. Like for me, I'm extremely book smart, I'm extremely creative, and I, and I tell stories. It's, it's some of the drawbacks to that, and the reason people think we're slow or retarded is because in other areas were not as good, such as in doing homework, uh, being organized, social skills, for example. Oh, most kids naturally learn the concept of personal space and the proper distance when speaking to someone. I was 12 years old before I learned that. At, 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 instead of the normal three, four, maybe five. I, um, a lot of autism um, people also have a certain men age they reach mentally and then they stay there. For me, for me mentally, I'm about 25, maybe 26 years old, even though Physically, I'm just turned 40. Hey. Hey. Um, some of the uh, other things we deal with is, is my brain works extremely fast as compared to some people. 
So I'm often have to consciously slow down me speaking because my mind will already be five comments ahead. But that also is a benefit when you're DMing or playing in because you can plan out what you it's gonna happen several turns ahead of time. Right. So that's kind of how I deal with things. Now, I also have health issues that they do kind of fall under disabilities because of their life ordering, but the stuff that anyone can get uh, and the two main ones I deal with are really bad migraines and arthritis that's in my back act. And some of those things require some changes. Um, for example, when I have really bad migraines, I might have to cancel a session or postpone a video. I'm pretty good about not doing so. Oh. Sometimes I have to DM from laying in bed instead of sitting up like I am now. Oh. Oh. And, and some, sometimes I just don't feel good enough to do anything. And that's the people are all face. I also deal with depression just like anyone else else we've all gone through stuff like that so that's kind of how I work um, one of the things I do want to point out also with how my mind works is I get really focused on to one thing such a, as oh I'm playing d and I need to prep and I can't do anything else until that's done. So I have a very hard time multitasking. I've got enough to the point where I can do two or three things at once over the computer, but to try to multitask in real life, it just doesn't work. I can't just stop and go oh, do dishes and then come back and do something else else that I was working on previously. Um, another thing with how my disability is work is for me to learn something takes a lot of effort. So like if I was going to hold a regular job uh, and I had a set way of working and that's all fine and good, but if they change one little thing up, I have to relearn everything. And almost as if I never worked, even though 99% of it is the same stuff, just in a different order, etc. It's almost as if it's totally new to me. So that's kind of where I come from. Um, so, maybe having been in many sessions, and how, how do you interact with me compared to someone who isn't disabled that you know of? Well, uh, for me, I'd say the only thing that comes to mind really is that sometimes there are certain words that you say that my head and ears are just like, we have no clue what's going on. And so um, what you do actually that really helps me when you catch me going, what? Wait, what? Can you say that again? What? <laughs> and you just write it down and I, I'm able to read it because um, that's another thing for me is especially like if it's names, like and there can be some crazy names that you come across in Dungeons and Dragons that oh, yeah. it's like Definitely. if you can write it down and then say it, then I can kind of hear and see and that just really gives the word its name. It's like, oh, okay, 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 duh. That's what you're saying. Okay. But for hey. the most part, um, you hold yourself quite well. Like, 
I would Why, not, thank you. Like, I would have not known anything different about you other than like, oh, yeah, you, you talk a little different. That would have been it for me. Yeah, yeah. most people don't know the rest unless they're around me in real life pretty constantly. Mm -hmm. Which one of these days I'm coming up to Seattle or to <laughs> visit? <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> So, let's talk a little bit about how we can and uh, utilize some someone who, who's like me to add that autism disability to a character. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm like trying to pull from one of my characters. Like, what character could I take and just be like, we're gonna now just kind of remold you a little bit. Okay. Um. Let's let's do Melanie since you and me know her the best. Okay, okay. Yes. This will be interesting. And kind of play with her. Sure. So, so before we go altering personality or anything, why don't you give our viewers the basic rundown on who Melanie is, is her kind of personality. It's like, all right, so Melanie Belru, she is a human bard, and she is about 19 years old, going on 20, and <clears throat> um, she's a very mild-mannered uh, woman, where she had, like, she had left her home because uh, persecution when not she decided to renounce her faith and so she just is going on life just trying to find her own place in the world and she's very much of the personality that everyone has the right to just kind of believe as they want to live as they want as long as they don't infringe it upon her she's not going to infringe her beliefs upon them and then next thing she knows she's in this caravan of guys and being told that she's a primordial and it's like ah! I, I have to do what I have to. Yeah, she, I have to like <laughs> be this. Yes, Melanie's going person. through quite a lot in a, a recent campaign. Oh, and so hey. she's basically, I'd say she's. It's comparable to Bilbo Baggins. Here's a quick little image of her, but um, where Bilbo Baggins, he had Gandalf knock on his door and is like, and send in these dwarfs and is like, you're gonna go off on an adventure with them, and it's just like. What? And so she's just kind of like having to learn her courage and and um, and just kind of okay. grow to her potential. Okay. So, oh, uh, now that the viewers kind of get a feel for who Melanie is and kind of the mild mannered young girl aspect, how would we go about out giving? her the disability of autism well, and we'll go specifically from my personal experiences because mm -hmm. autism is a very wide range that it is i was actually just thinking um something that would probably be very applicable to her in uh, what we know of her already it what you mentioned about like having a job and if in like learning the routine of things and then if they change yeah. that one Thing, that one thing it just botches the whole thing you're just like way to go I have to learn this all over again she's actually yeah. prob like that would probably be her thing where it's like change is very hard for her like especially for her personally exactly. where it's like she has to now apply that like wait I'm a primordial and I have to fight no 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 I'm just ordinary I don't fight and so yeah. those are like two so, changes. So that definitely would be something that you could apply to kind of give the autism feel. Yeah. Oh, another thing, especially with her being a bird, is she would be very knowledgeable. Oh. Mm -hmm. So you could play her as a very intellectual type. If she's read it, <laughs> she knows it. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and maybe not like for the graphic memory. Yeah, yeah. Because well, even of course I not. don't have well, that. That's like even when. But, you... <laughs> I, but I can't remember 
probably 90% of stuff I read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I know I even right now with roles and whatnot, it's like you'll bring something up, some kind of lore or history, and it's like, I'm going to roll, see, Mallory remembers this, and like if it is high enough, I just attribute it to she must have read it somewhere. Exactly. Hey. So, uh, mm -hmm. with, so it's really a lot of things are just little things. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, um, w one of the things, like with the speech impediment, you can hear sometimes my words break up, up, and I'll repeat the word, even if it's in the middle of a sentence. It's, and usually that's more to do with my mind has kind of wandered on on and I have to bring it back and realize what I'm saying and oh yes, that's where I was kinda do. So that's something you could utilize to give kind of the impression of a speech impediment without giving some weird accent. Uh, true. <laughs> uh, or true. you could give them kind of a lisp or a mm -hmm. stutter. Um, you could, uh, autism people also uh, uh, tend to form very close bonds with people, and then they have a very small circle of uh, people. Like, I could probably name uh, all my friends that I really hang, hang out with. It's on both hands. And, and then our my family, that's my mom's basically though. My mom and my biological dad are the two I'm close to. Mm -hmm. So there's probably no more than a dozen people someone who's autistic would have in this really close circle. So that's another aspect that you can bring in um, simply by having your character from a special bomb with one of the other players or one of the other NPCs. Okay, okay. So, so, oh. What some of the other things we talked about that you noticed you could bring in? <laughs> well, funny enough, you should mention those uh, bonds and whatnot because right now for Melanie, like her immediate circle is these four other players who, yeah. like, it, it and her there's... new fairy dragon and her new fairy dragon, yep, 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 and probably that shadow cat she'll get to know yeah. as well, and um. And but uh, it's like, but it's a little bit of situational, like where she she doesn't really have necessarily a choice about being with them, but yet she is, and there are the the the, the and like they each have their own kind of like meaning to her and such. Yeah. Um, whether and, you know, she... and there's some you're closer to as a character than mm -hmm. others. Indeed. It's like Bordeaux and Camaris. Mm -hmm. Definitely, Zarin's climbing up that ladder really fast. Avery's yeah. just keeping out of It's like you can see over there, Avery. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so you already, even without knowing it, have been doing some of these things. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I, I even like uh, with some of the things that you're saying. Like I was even able to like look at myself going. My mind runs like a hundred miles an hour too. I have to really focus, and I yeah. do get like, like super engaged yeah. on one and thing. And that's one of the things. <laughs> and I, I live by a saying when it comes to disabilities, and that is everyone's disabled. It's just a matter of how, mm -hmm. because there really is no set such thing as being normal. Everyone's different. Yeah, everyone has their own challenges to overcome, and so... Exactly. Hey, so, oh, some of the other things I 
kind of know talked about it's like arthritis that's easily put in mm-hmm. and oh oh you don't want your character getting up in the morning or he or they have a hard time getting up because the back hurts really simple migraines oh i'm feeling sick it goes Could you please quiet down? My head is killing me. Really easy to bring in. So that's some of the ways you could do it. And you can do it in such a way that it's not offensive. Simply by treating it respectfully. You're trying to convey what it's like for those type of people or characters. Mm-hmm. It's, you don't make a joke out of it. Oh my God, I was blind before he's going to be running into everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, <clears throat> et cetera. Mm-hmm. You treat it like you would if you were actually experiencing it. Uh, uh, and you also make a, a, a disclaimer at the beginning of the session saying your intent is not to be offensive but to per- portray some of your understanding of what it's like. And if you do those two things, most people who are disabled or will not have an issue with if you bringing it up or talking about it or using it for your characters. It's simply because we want people to understand what it's like to be us. It's because if we can get other people to understand, then they can interact with us better. And when that interaction occurs, it makes the world a better place. Let alone, if I may add, I think when we have these characters, like whether we're playing them or reading about them or seeing them on the big screen, that have these disadvantages to themselves physically or mentally, and we get to, like, experience them overcoming these challenges, conquering, still, like reaching their goals and obtaining whatever it is that they desire, like, you're kind of like cheering on with them, just like, wow! Uh, Oh, yeah. He's successful! Yeah, it's very inspirational. Um, One of my favorite stories is that I read is is Dan Mailman's Way of the Peaceful Warrior. And he was an Olympic gymnast who got in a motorcycle accident and was told he would never walk, much less perform again. And and he, in the story, which is based on his true story, he met a, a very old man who worked at a gas station who who kind of changed the way he thought and really pushed him saying, you can do this. And he learned not only to walk, but he came back and did better in the gymnastics than he had ever done. So stuff like that is really inspiring. eh? And it also shows regular people who struggle with different types of disabilities or different issues that they can overcome what they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yes, it's not easy. Yes, we deal with a lot of people making fun of us, us, us or being ignorant. But that's human nature. The only way for us to change it is doing stuff like redoing hair, explaining this is how we work, work, and allowing them to see what it's like from our points of view. And 
most people, not all, because there are some that just are total jerks and don't have any empathy whatsoever. But I would say 95% of people, or oh, when they see what someone else is going through and struggling with, they're sympathetic to it. And usually they can find something to relate to. And once you have that thing that they can relate to, it all works itself out from there. So, do you have any closing thoughts, Mary? Uh, nothing comes to mind. I think you did a pretty good job and being very concise and to the point. Thank you. Thank you. So, oh, with that, since I have nothing further to add, uh, I hope everyone enjoyed the video and it really helps bring to life these issues for it for each person and how they can use it. And it, and not just as a gimmick, it, but it, if you do it occasionally, so say like your character has autism and you make it a point maybe once every three sessions and to uh, kind of highlight one of these things we suggested you could bring in and such as changing something up up and then having to relearn how to do everything if you do it once every two three sessions and it's a real quick like two minute deal it adds realism to the game and, and when things seem real to people or oh, they get it uh, to be more immersive people get interested in the characters and the story hey. so hopefully this is a benefit for other people or, or like that at, at, and as always may the dice roll in your favor <laughs>